New York Knicks fans, what is going on? You're watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and in today's show, I'm going to be answering your guys' questions. I posted a post on our community tab on Knicks Now, and I asked you guys to submit your questions for a mailbag, and we're going to answer all of your questions. But if you want to be featured on the next New York Knicks, New York Knicks mailbag, you got to go down right now and hit that big red button because we only answer questions from subscribers. Hit that big red button and help us get to 10,000 subscribers. Subscribers, Jesus, I can't even speak. First one coming in from Eternal Knicks Optimist, one of the realest of the real ones. Salute to you, bro. You've been here since day one. Do you think Derrick Rose is on the opening day roster? And if so, will he be a Nick? after the trade deadline this is a great question derrick rose has been mentioned in trade rumors all off season long the team that's been most notably attached to rose is the milwaukee bucks and that makes sense they need someone to come off the bench and provide a spark to the offense and be able to carry the offense if i was leon rose even though derrick rose has been absolutely great for the new york knicks since he got traded from the detroit pistons to the knicks I think I would move on from him. But first, let's make let's break down the player he is. When he came here from the Pistons in that trade for Dennis Smith Jr. in a second-round pick, it was a steal. He played 35 games in 2021, helped the Knicks get to the four-seed, averaged 15, shot 49% from the field and 41% from three. And he was great this year before he hurt his ankle and was out for the year. 12 points per game, four dimes, 45% from the deck, and 40% from three. And how can we, confer, how can we forget what he did in the NBA playoffs against the Atlanta Hawks when he was thrusted into the starting lineup. He looked like Derrick Rose turned the clock back. He averaged 19.4 points per game, five assists, and shot 47% from the field and 37% or 47% from three. Derrick Rose has been nothing but great for the New York Knicks. But he's almost 35. He's coming off yet another ankle surgery. And I don't know if the Knicks are ready to depend on him for 82 games. And I say this because I also want Emmanuel quickly to be that, star, that point guard coming off the bench, the first guard off the bench, and not Derrick Rose. I have no, no bad words to say about D. Rose. But if he wants to go play for a contender and you can trade him for an asset, I think it's best in the Knicks' best interest to make that deal happen but I want all Knicks fans to let me know how you feel what would you do with Derrick Rose would you trade him would you keep him sound off type T for trade or you can go down and type K for keep here on New York Knicks now we put out videos every single day on the latest New York Knicks news and rumors when they make a move we make a video when news comes out we make a video. So subscribe so you can stay up to date on the latest New York Knicks news and rumors and help us get to 10,000 subscribers. We've been growing like crazy. We've picked up over 3,000 subs in the past 28 days. Become one of those guys. Be a real one. Hit that big red button. Gabriel, what up, bro? Do you think by how Randall has changed himself attitude-wise and body-wise that he's ready to let what happened last year be in the past. We had a couple questions on Julius Randle, so we'll push this next one across as well. It's very similar. If Randle isn't traded, should Knicks fans forgive and forget like the best friend's girlfriend we cursed out on their behalf after a bad breakup, and now they're back together or bring the smoke till he's gone? Krillians, that's an awesome way to say it. I will say this about Julius Randle. If he can get back to the version he was in 2020 compared to 2021, I, you, your mom, your dad would be a very happy New York Knicks fan. He was a second team all NBA player, NBA's most improved player, but he took a major step backward this past year. The raw numbers of 20 points per game and 9.9 .9 rebounds and five assists, that's really good. It looks great on paper, but you have to look at the efficiency. He shot 41% from the field and 30% from three, I don't think he has a spot on this team anymore, and I don't think he's willing to take a backseat role, but I will say this. If Julius Randle is a Nick when opening night comes here, I will support him because I'm a Knicks fan, and I want the Knicks to be the best team they possibly can. And it means if Julius Randle's on the team, I'm going to root for him so the Knicks can get dubs. Sub for Knicks, dubs. We'll bring that back 
once the regular season's here. But I'm going to support everybody that's on the Knicks. Has he worn out his welcome? Yes. Did he piss me off with the thumbs down stuff? Yes. All the things that happened last year made me view Julius Randle in a negative light. But if he's back with the Knicks next year, I'll be wearing my 30 jersey, and I'll be rocking out with Julius, hoping he can get back to being that all-NBA player. I want you to predict the future for me, though. Will Julius Randle be on the Knicks when the season starts? This is a very tough question, so educate me in the comment section, Knicks fans. Type Y for yes or type N for no. Alexander Nunez, what's up, fam? What do you think the ceiling is for Emmanuel quickly? Are we doing him a disservice by bringing in a young starting point guard? I could see and understand where you're coming from. A lot of people, Knicks fans, myself included, at one point wanted Emmanuel quickly to be the starting point guard going forward for the New York Knicks, but they brought Jalen Brunson in. And I think that's where quickly fits best. As a bench guard coming off the bench, being that super six man, carry the offense, get buckets, get everyone involved, be the floor general of that second unit. I think that is his ceiling. I think he can be a super six man for a contender. And we saw in the final 22 games of the NBA season this past year how good he can be. He played 28 minutes per night coming off the bench and was fabulous. 16 and a half points per game, five assists, 44% from the field and 39% from three. Emmanuel quickly is a hooper, he's a baller, he's a bucket getter in every sense of the word. But I don't know if he's a legit 82-game starter at point guard. I like him best in a Lou Will type of role coming off the bench. Lead the second unit, get the young guys moving, get buckets by yourself, be a one-man band off of the bench. I think he can be the first guard off of the bench for an NBA Finals contending team. I love IQ. Can't wait to see what he does with the Knicks next year. This next one coming in from Ty D. What up, bro? When will RJ get his extension? I'm getting anxious. I wouldn't be nervous about the Knicks and RJ Barrett not coming to a conclusion yet on a contract extension. A lot of people selected in the draft that he was selected have already signed those deals. We're seeing those five years, $185 million max extensions being handed out to guys in his draft class, and it's coming for RJ. I don't know if he'll sign the max contract, but he will be a New York Knick and get that second contract. The Athletic put up a very cool article. They pulled GMs and front office personnel and asked them, how much do you think R.J. Barrett is worth? And they said, asking 16 officials in the NBA front offices what they would deem a fair number for Barrett in an extension this summer or fall. Responses ranged from $15 million to $30 million a year. No one advocated for the Knicks to give him the max. Exactly half of the responses were a nice, clean four years, $100 million, making it by far the most common proposal from the polled executives. I'd be cool with four years, $100 million, five years, $125, five years, $150. I wouldn't give him the max. I'd pay him anywhere from $25 to $30 million. But I can guarantee you this, Knicks fans. Knicks management. Leon Rose, World Wide West, and RJ Rowan Barrett will agree to a contract extension. He's going to put that ink to paper. He's going to be playing in Madison Square Garden, repping that blue and orange for a very long time. It is time for us as Knicks fans to embrace R.J. Barrett as the face of this franchise. 22 years old, and he's doing stuff in the NBA that we haven't seen many other people do at that age. I love R.J. He's Star J. Broadway Barrett. Let's ride. Show some love to R.J. Barrett right now in the comment section. And just type nine, his jersey number. I want to see the comment section flooded with nines. Because one thing I feel like we don't do as Knicks fans sometimes is show love to the homegrown and the people that are on this team and want to be a part of this franchise. And that's what R.J. Barrett wants to be. He lives and breathes being a New York Knick. So let's show him some love. Type nine in the comment section right now. Ethan, what up, Brody? Have you always been a Knicks fan? If not... When did you start following the team? Yes, Ethan, I've been a New York Knicks fan since the, day, since the day I came out of my mama's womb. I was born in New York, Long Island, raised by a New York Knicks fan. My dad grew up in New York, lived there for 35 years. He's a diehard New York Knicks fan. And if you know anything about Knicks fans, we are the most, most loyal to the soil people you will find. I was born in 1994. Some of my earliest memories of being a New York Knicks fan was in that 2000 season in the Knicks and the Heat rivalries. It was awesome. Spreewell, Allen Houston, those teams were awesome. Then it carried into David Lee 
Nate Robinson, Stephon Marbury, Jamal Crawford. It was awesome. Tim Thomas, then it went to Mello, then Jeremy Lin, then all those guys. I've been a Knicks fan my whole entire life. I'm 27 years old. I bleed New York Knicks blue and orange. My life goes as the Knicks go. When they're good, which hasn't been that often in my life, I'm going to be going good. And when they're struggling, I'm going to be struggling. That's for sure. Ethan, I'm a real one. I'm a Knicks fan. I know you're a Knicks fan. But let me know, Ethan and everybody that's made it this far in the video, when did you become a Knicks fan? Let me know maybe your first memory of being a Knicks fan. I want to get to know you guys more and more as we continue to do these videos. So let me know in the comment section when you became a New York Knicks fan. I appreciate everybody that's made it this far in today's video. If you did, you're a real one. You could drop a real one in the comment section to show me some love. Or give me a follow on Twitter at MarshallGreen underscore. I'm tweeting about the Knicks all day, every day. And I'm trying to grow my Twitter cloud a little bit. And I only really want Knicks fans to follow me. So if you're looking for a follower, I'll give you a follow back at MarshallGreen underscore.